Hey there, welcome to CNT Collectibles MC. Hope you are doing well today. We're going to take a look at the left fielders in my Hall of Fame tracker series exercise I do at the end of every season to see who may be on the track, who might be falling off the track, so I can uh, better focus on my collection. One of these days that might actually work, you know, getting the focus. So anyways, left fielders, let's get into it here. We have 22 left fielders in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. The average fan graph war, 66 and some change. Highest fan graph war, 130. Ted Williams, class of 66. The most hits, Carl Yastrzemski with 3,400. The most home runs, 521. The aforementioned Mr. Williams, 3,000 hit club. Yes, Ricky Henderson, Lou Brock, and the 500 home run club, Ted Williams. Ted Williams, not a 3,000 hit club member. Probably would have been. But he was busy uh, serving three years in the middle of his career in uh, in World War II. So that uh, makes his accomplishments even more impressive. So uh, people are wondering what we do about a half season of, of COVID in 2020. It's like, you know, what about the three years some of these guys missed fighting in a war and they still got the job done. So uh, coming up on the ballot, Matt Holliday. 50 fan graphs, 435 weight runs created, 2,000 hits, 300 home runs, four silver sluggers, seven all-star games, and a top five MVP finish. I think what held him back, or what is going to hold him back, there was zero production after age 35. So that's where we kind of end our uh, our analysis, saying, you know what, they, these guys are kind of done by age 35. They'll have a few years of doing a little bit of something, um, call it gravy, but Matt Holiday, zero wins above replacement or just just above that in those years post 35 and he didn't really get an early start he didn't really start uh, serious production until about 26 or 27 so you can see his jaws or his seven-year peak that voters may look for at 34 wins uh, falls short of the average hall of famer who had 41 wins and so if he would have been able to do a little bit more than he did up front and then uh, throw in some garbage time in the on the back end perhaps he could have uh, closed in on that 60 65 area and the rest of these numbers uh, would have been a little bit more enhanced and made this case more interesting as it stands probably on the outside looking in all right we have some notables off the track some players that uh, you may target but you may think twice about paying uh, at least full price it comes down to price so these are still very collectible players brandon marsh nolan jones age 25 a uh, handful of wins a piece average hall of famer at the age 25 has close to 19 wins so they are off the track they need to average five five and a half wins on, on an annual basis to uh to catch up and do that over the next decade maybe a tall order as we will see as uh you know as a lot of the hall of famers they they, they 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 tend to peak at that four four and a half wins on average if uh one of those guys if marshall jones can throw up a uh, seven or eight win season well it makes up a heck of a lot of ground so we'll just uh, continue to monitor eloy jimenez uh, he's got the talent there's no question about it the the health history is not helping him out brian reynolds a little bit of a, a later start at age 28 he's got 14 wins above replacement the average hall of famer is 34 wins so he has to average over six errors arena Coming over a little bit later, impressive story. Uh, that needs to average over seven wins as well. Kyle Schwarber, uh, same deal over uh, over nine wins on an annual basis. However, if you uh, if you look at his home run track, it's a little bit more interesting. But um, he's going to have to do a little bit better in this department before he even gets uh, before he starts getting uh, that kind of consideration here. So a couple of players coming up that maybe a little bit too early, although maybe a little bit too early on one of our featured players here. So that, that's just how it goes. So Evan Carter, nice playoffs, made a name for himself here. Average Hall of Famer at uh, age 20 he's got a third of a win and he's got 1.3 so what a nice pace right there he's the average just under four if he can uh, build on his late season success and keep it going then we've got we've got something here christopher morell over a complete season would have been a uh, would have been a monster as well so age 24 a little bit later than we like to see here three wins the average hall of famer at age 24 13 wins so he's got to average over five See what he can do with the full season. He was on that pace here, so we'll see what he can uh, what he can do with that. S. Jerry Ruiz, uh, same thing here. Came up a little bit late, but these guys have the talent, and if they could put up a six or seven one season in the next couple, then uh, then then uh, then then they're on a better track here. But as it stands, the average Hall of Famer starts to peak around age. Uh, 23 and goes up to around 34 35 something like that so uh peak years over five wins uh, on kind of on an annual basis between 25 and 27 kind of messed up by uh, stan the man and, and ted williams who between them were putting up seven eight nine win seasons there so skews things a little bit but if uh, if we can get a player to average four four and a half uh we feel pretty good about their about their peak um as long as they're they're in this age range here so uh, let's get into some of the more notable names here. Lawrence Newt Barge, 25, six wins above replacement. 
uh, five, uh, a little over five to get to that uh, 60 win total by age 35. So uh, average average Hall of Famer has about 65 wins above replacement at this position. So if you're able to tack on a couple of junk years after 35, then uh, good enough. So let's see if we can get to that 60 number here. A couple hundred hits, 33 home runs, 117 weighted runs created. A little bit of a later start. You want to see this number coming in age 23 uh, to, to get on that track. So he's got the talent. Um, but uh, but he's off the track diverging, and so again because of youth, uh, he's he's at least interesting here. But his trajectory is is not one that gives a uh, uh, a lot of longevity to his uh, to his card value here. So Stephen Kwan, another one came up and uh, a terrific defender here. You can see this in his in his WAR, Fangraphs WAR seven point four, Baseball Reference WAR a little bit higher because of that excellent defense. Needs again average over uh, five runs. On an, uh, on an annual basis to get to that uh, 60 wins above replacement by age 35, 300 hits, 11 home runs. Way to run's created 112. And so, uh, again, it's going to be a little bit uh, more difficult for him. That defense, he could start to really rack up the numbers in the, in the, in the hardware in that, in that area. But he's going to have to do a little bit more at the, uh, at the bat to get that wins above replacement to, uh, to start track a little bit closer to what the average Hall of Fame has done. So, all right, a little blind reveal here. We've got a couple of players, both age 31. Both with very similar Fangraphs war, both have an MVP. So their track is very similar. One has 1,500 hits, the other one has 846. In the home run department, the, they, they kind of flip-flop the uh, the leadership there. One has nearly 200 home runs, one has 257 runs. Way to runs created both elite level bats. One has 165 uh, way to runs created versus the uh, the 130 for the uh, for the first player. So uh, similar enough uh, at the plate. One's a little bit more skilled at getting on and hitting, and the other one's skilled at putting the ball out of the park and jogging it in there. But uh, but both pretty terrific players on a similar path. And the first one we have is Christian Yelich. You might guess who the second one is already. After this, I'll tell you who it is. If you if you don't, so 41 Fangraphs WAR, 39 Baseball Reference WAR again the defense. Not uh, not quite there, so it'll get dinged a tiny, tiny bit in baseball references land. Just under five wins on an annual basis to get to that 60 by 35. He's done a lot of heavy lifting already. He's put up seven, eight win seasons, and so can he do what he did this past season and be that four-ish wins, win player over the uh, next few years? Uh, 1,500 hits, 193 home runs, 129 winner runs created. If we can get another 1,000 hits, that's a big deal. I mean, if you want to be a Hall of Famer, you're probably going to have to play for a while. He's going to have to be productive up until 37 or 38, but he's not dead yet. So very, 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 uh, very nice track here. Last few years, he's fallen off, but he's, he's started to reaccelerate just a little bit here. So we'll see what kind of yellows we get over the next couple of years here. We know the skills are there. So uh, if he's able to put up some more four-win seasons, four-and-a-half-win seasons, then, then uh, you know we can uh, put him back in the conversation. He's got the MVP. And so if you do get to that 60 wins above replacement, you are sitting at 23, 2,500 hits, and you're sitting with an MVP, that's a heck of a tiebreaker historically. So uh, that's what makes him uh, very, very uh, relevant still. A couple of top five MVPs, a couple of all-star games, gold glove, and three silver sluggers. The other player that uh, we compared him to there in the initial um, in the in the blind reveal was Aaron Judge. And so the home runs obviously are there. The hits are quite aren't quite there and so uh, they both have interesting paths there and judge uh, again if he can remain productive and healthy he can get to that 60 wins at mvp and just as legend the yankee link yankee legend all gonna be very very interesting tiebreakers and we'll take a closer look at him in a in a week or two here so but for now christian yelich um on a similar path to uh, to aaron judge one is accelerating one is slowing down but their long-term prospects are relatively equal and so if you're if you're looking for a, a, a card that might be interesting well look no further <laughs> So, um, Jordan Alvarez again. The uh, the prices between Yelich and Judge might be a little bit. Uh, there might be some discrepancies there. So, anyways, Jordan Alvarez, twenty six years old, eighteen Fangraphs WAR, eighteen Baseball Reference WAR, four point six. I don't know how this can got off base here, but I'll walk you through it. All right, four point six uh, wins on an annual basis needed to get to that sixty by thirty five. Five hundred and thirteen hits, hundred twenty nine home runs, one hundred sixty six weighted runs created. One of the best bats in the game. There's no question about that. He's got a rookie of the year. He's got a top five MVP, couple of All Star games, and a Silver Slugger at the DH position. The DH position is now legit for Hall of Fame path. And so um, he played a little bit in left field. Left field was a little bit light. So anybody that was kind of on the fence, if you've uh, if you played there this year, even if you haven't played there in the past, or if you're DH, I'm chucking you in with the left fielders just so we have a few names to throw here. But for Jordan Alvarez, this is a this is a great looking path here. So uh, how well does he uh, how well does he age? You know, can his uh, can his body hold up and can he uh, keep hitting at this very high level for the next decade? Uh, if he can, um, what a what a great track there. So 
um, yeah, he's, he's doing what he can <laughs> and he's doing it well. So Corbin Carroll, age 22, I'd usually say, you know, kind of young to put him uh, in, in this area here, but he's, he's certainly earned it. There's no question about it. So he's got 6.6 .6 baseball reference war. So we'll have to work on the defense a little bit here. Well, if he just needs to average over four wins on an annual basis to get to that 60 by 35, 188 hits, 29 home runs, 133 weight runs created elite level bat, elite level speed. Um, so the speed thing, is uh is something that doesn't last forever but he's got the uh he's got the on base skills and so you know if he can refine those and continue to get better uh he is on a path that is above the uh, the average hall of famer at this point in his very young career here rookie of the year top five mvp and an all-star game that's a couple of years if he continues to do this um you know the the, the there, there may no, there, he may not be able to buy a card <laughs> so at a reasonable price so uh, right now yeah he's very hot at some point if there's a uh, a little bit of a slump or soft spot um, maybe worth interest maybe worth uh, picking up some of his things here because again that path is uh, is early but generational and middling and generational middle uh, not early not late by any stretch um, but uh, your your number one target is Juan Soto so no surprise there I don't think I, the surprise might be that I put him in with left fielders because well, that's where he played this year maybe he goes back to right I don't know but this year is a left fielder so here he is 24 years old 28 fan graphs war uh, to get to that 60 by uh, 35, um, he needs uh, just to average just under three. So as bad as people think he's he's playing right now, he needs to do even less to stay on on that uh, historic pace here. 700 hits, 160 home runs, 154 weighted runs created. So, um, yeah, the average Hall of Famer at this point has about 13 or 14 wins above replacement. So he's, he's well above the line, well on the track, and he can afford to have some legit bad years, which he hasn't had yet really, <laughs> um, to uh, sneak close to that line. But if he keeps up, uh, what he's doing here, this is a generational type track here. A couple of top five MVPs, three All-Star games, four Silver Sluggers. So uh, impressive stuff there for uh, from uh, Mr. Soto at such a young age. That's that's part of the deal. Come up early and produce. He's doing both great. So we've got players that come up early, they don't produce, or they come up late and they produce. But he's really got the uh, the best of all worlds there. So we'll wrap it up with that one. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and we'll uh, we'll catch you in the very near future. Thank you very much.